Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, Exposure Software has upgraded Exposure X5 to X6. Today, I downloaded a trial version of the software. Uh, no, I haven't purchased it yet. I probably will. I'll probably do more videos down the road and the trial version lasts for 30 days. So I'll probably be purchasing it somewhere within the next month or so. Um, the trial version is a fully working uh, version of the software. It just expires after 30 days. Um, in the description below this video, I'll have a link. Uh, you could try it out for yourself. I also have a discount code you could use if you decide to purchase it. Now, it is not a free upgrade to those that already own Exposure X5. So uh, you will have to purchase it. Now, um, as far as the software itself and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to give you an overview of it and talk about a few of the new features, not all of the new features, just a few of the new features uh, that are in it. Now, as you can see, those of you familiar with the product, the workspace is laid out pretty much the same, but it now has this dark look, whereas before it had the more light look uh, to uh, the layout. And um, as we look at it on the left hand side, we have folders at the top. So you could just navigate to where your images are on your computer and load that folder in there. And then the images will show up along the bottom in the film strip. Or if you have uh, your images on a memory card, you just went out shooting, you uh, import them into uh, Exposure X6 from the memory card directly like you would in Lightroom or anything like that. Now, below that, we have presets. Uh, you also could make collections similar to Lightroom. Um, and you know, along the bottom, you could give your images star ratings and color labels and so on. So all that's pretty much the same. Now, what is new is this new auto feature over here. It's in the basic tab and I'll open up the basic tab even though you don't have to, to do it. And uh, if you just click on auto, it will give your image an automatic uh, set of processing. Now the unique, the unique thing about this auto feature compared to let's say other applications that do have auto settings is you could fine tune this. If you click on this little flyout menu right next to auto, you could see that you could uh, decide what you want the auto adjustments to actually adjust. For example, if you don't want it to do white balance, just uncheck that box. Then every time you hit, hit auto enhance, it will not do white balance or exposure or tone or whatever if you uncheck the box. Also, you could uh, kind of adjust the auto more towards your taste. For example, if you like your tones, uh, the tone of the image may be a little stronger, you could turn this slider all the way up to 100. Then when you click Auto Enhance, it will make those tones stronger. Watch, I'll reset it. And then I'll go back to Auto and just click on it. And you can see it, it's made a little more contrast in there because I have tone now at 100. I could bring it back down to where it was at 50. And you could look at the image. I'll click Auto Enhance. And you can see how it's not as contrasty now. So that Auto feature is new and it's relatively unique because you could kind of fine tune it uh, to your taste. Now also they have a haze level slider uh, that's new. Um, you go to the left to remove haze, go to the right to add haze. To reset any slider just double click on the name of the slider and you'll reset it. They also uh, supposedly redid highlights and shadows um, apparently. In the past it was a linear adjustment so as you moved like highlights up or down it was very linear. Now it actually uh, uses, I'm going to stop short of calling it AI, but it, I guess it examines the image and decides on how to adjust these shadows and highlights. So it is um, supposedly better according to them the way it works, the highlights and shadows. So that uh, kind of uh, processing engine part of the software is different. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about um, what's new with the product and then I'll just process this image real quick and I want to show you something that I found that you should look out for. Uh, the last thing that's new is in the color uh, tab and right here it's advanced Col color editor and if you click on that you'll bring up this dialog box here and you can see we have the color wheels and what you could do with this is you could uh, 
substitute a color for another color. For example, if I click on this little eyedropper, uh, my cursor turns into the eyedropper. And if I click on the blue sky, you can see how now this um, color wheel has those blue tones encapsulated in that little slice of pie. This one as well. But what I could do now is I could take this one, maybe, let me see if I could do it. There, no, there we go. And I could change the color of the sky. You see how I'm doing that? So you could substitute one color for another color uh, once you learn how to click on the little wheel like I was having a hard time doing. You also then could change the, um, the range of those colors that it's going to affect. You could make it larger and have it come in there like that. There we go. And then you could change the color. So that is new. Um, so I'm going to reset that because that's nothing I want to do for this image. So it looks kind of complicated and I'm going to play with it a little more and probably down the line I'll do some more videos on this and demonstrate how to utilize this in a more um, like real way. Uh, that's something I probably would never do is change the color of the sky. But um, maybe there is an application down the road where I would want to use it. And like I said, I'll uh, investigate that a little further and do a video. Now I did want to mention one issue I found. Um, this specific image was shot with a Sony a7R4 and a Sigma 24-70 f2.8 lens. And if I go to lens corrections, you can see that nothing is there. And um, at first I thought that was because it's a mirrorless camera and the lens corrections are built into the RAW file. And I thought, well, maybe it was just automatically added to the RAW file. Now over here, this image was shot with a, um, let me see if I can fit it to screen. I guess I can't. Um, this image was shot with a um, Fujifilm X-T4 and a Fujifilm um, 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8 uh, lens. And now when I open up lens corrections, you could see all that is there automatically. I didn't do that. So it found the lens profile for this mirrorless camera and applied it. Now it didn't do vignette correction, that's off. So you could turn that on or just use the profile and then it will take a second to do. I noticed this is um, a little bit slow, but then it will apply that uh, correction to the image. Now, if we go back to our original image, what I need to do here then is I need to find the lens. So this is Sigma, right? So I'll go there and then model. Again, I need to go to the um, Sigma SA and it's Sigma 24 to 7 F2.8 IF EX 8 DG HSM. I think that's it right there. So I'll click on that. And then you could see how it applied the lens corrections. Let me turn that off and on. So it, it definitely applied the lens corrections, uh, but it didn't do any vignette corrections. So I'll have to do that, turn that on profile, and you could see how it brightened up the edges. So I had to manually do that. So um, if you do use this software, just be aware of that. Now, I'm not sure if it didn't find it because it's a third party lens on a Sony camera. It's not a Sigma lens on a Sigma camera or a Sony lens on a Sony camera. It's a Sigma lens on a Sony camera. I'm not sure I haven't investigated it enough to know, but just make sure you look out for that. Now, I'm just gonna quickly uh, process this. Now, of course, I could come over here and like use a, uh, a um, preset if I wanted to, but let's just show you the processing real quick. Um, I'm going to reset it though, and I'm going to lose my um, my lens corrections when I did that. But um, we'll open up the shadows, bring in the highlights. Not a lot of processing needed for this image here, I don't think. Add some dynamic contrast. I don't need haze. We'll add a bit of saturation. Um, then I think I'm done there. I'm going to jump down to sharpening and we'll sharpen it, even though I should do noise reduction first. And actually that's something I wanted to talk about was noise reduction. Uh, that's new also. I forgot to mention, uh, they actually look at the camera, the exact camera model, and it will apply, 
um, noise reduction uh, automatically to the image. Now it did find my camera, uh, as I mentioned, a 7 r 4 and from what I understand, it actually applied noise reduction to this image, even though all the sliders are at zero. It just did this automatic profile setting. Uh, but you could come in and add more if you wanted to. And if you find that when you're adding this noise reduction, that it's making the image look soft, it's not as sharp, then you come in with this smoothing slider and you move that to the right and it will bring those edges back. Um, not sure. I'm, I actually am seeing it a little bit like right in here as I move it to the right. Either that or my eyes are deceiving me. So come in and, you know, typically I did this backwards. I would do noise reduction first and then I would do sharpening last. But I started just going down the, um, down the uh, list of tabs here. Uh, so then I would guess go to tone curve. And I like their tone curve. I like the way it works. Uh, you could use these uh, sliders and put an S curve in there. You don't have to go on the curve itself, although you could if you needed to uh, do it. But then you could you know, come in and it's kind of like another highlights, uh, shadows, slider. You have a mid-tone slider in there, so you could come in and do that really quick. And let's just for the sake of time, um, say we're done pretty much. Um, is there anything else I want to do? Let's do a vignette, I guess. Like that. And I'll do a before after. There's before. And there's after. Before, after. So there is, um, you know, in a nutshell, how to use it. I actually do not like what I just did to this image. I don't like my processing at all, but it, I really wasn't paying attention too closely as I was moving those sliders around. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how those sliders work. But what I encourage you to do is just download the um, free trial like I did. It's a fully working free trial, and you could give it a go and see if it's something that you'd use before you purchase it. And if you do purchase it, use my uh, promo code. Again, I'll have that all listed in the description below this video. What about it? Do you think I should do some more videos on Exposure X6? Let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>